The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane by Kate D. Camillo, presented by Miss Harmon's Language Arts Classes. In The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane, Edward is a China rabbit who lives with the Tulane family. He does not pay attention to most human conversations and is very self-centered. He did not like it when someone called him something he was not. Every day, Abilene would sit Edward down in a chair and set his stopwatch for 3 o'clock when she would come back home. One day, suddenly, Edward heard a strange barking sound from the other side of the door. Then, frantically from the other side of the door, came running through the neighbor's dog, Rosie. Rosie ran up to Edward and caught him in her mouth. She started ferociously, ferociously shaking him back and forth. The thought of being slobbered and shaken in the mouth of a dog grossed him out immensely. Just then, the mother saw what was going on and demanded Rosie drop it. Instead of being grateful, he hated that Abilene's mob called him it. Later that night, Edward heard a noise coming through the door of Abilene's room. It was Pellegrina. She was there to tell Abilene and... Edward, a bedtime story. The story was about a princess. She was very beautiful, and all of the princes from places far and close came to marry her. She rejected them all because she claimed that she loved nobody. There was this one prince who proposed to her with a golden ring. Now, instead of just saying no, she took the ring and swallowed it whole. Then, one day, she was wandering in the woods when she came across a cottage. She asked if anybody was home. Then a voice said, come in. When she was inside, she saw an ugly witch at, the, at a table counting her gold. The princess demanded the witch guide her back to her kingdom or there would be consequences. Then the witch asked her who she loved, and the princess said that she loved no one. Then the witch said, you disappoint me, and the princess was turned into a war hog and killed by her kingdom's own soldiers. What a terrible deed, Edward thought. Who would do such a thing? Then they went to sleep. Then a few days later, when they were packing for their cruise to London, Abilene was packing Edward's suits and clothing. They were taking a trip to London for Abilene's birthday. Her mother and father were taking her on, a, on the trip. When they boarded the ship, they said goodbye to Pellegrina, and they then they set off. Abilene asked if she could go to explore the ship with Edward. Her parents said yes, and then she and Edward were off. And on the exploration, they encountered two boys, wondering what Edward was. One of the boys took him out of Abilene's hands and started playing monkey in the middle with him. Then, without warning, Abilene tackled the boy who had Edward, and then he flew overboard. Once Edward got thrown off the ship, he sunk down and down into the ocean. It got darker and darker as he sunk down. As he hit the ocean floor, he felt his first emotion. He was afraid. As the days went on, he thought about the story Pellegrina told him. He thought about the princess and how she got turned into a warthog. After a long time of waiting, he finally got some movement. A wave had taken him to somewhere he didn't know. As the waves kept moving, he found that he was caught in something. It was a ginormous fishing net. All of a sudden, Edward got pulled up in a net from a fisherman. He started to see the sun and then the fisherman Lawrence. He picked him up out of the net and said, Ain't no fish, looks like a toy. He said, Nellie will love you and fix you up. He got to the shore. His ears and tail were all soggy and messed up. Lawrence put him on his shoulders and walked to the door. Lawrence walked in with Edward on his shoulders. Lawrence said, Look what I brought you from the sea. Nellie replied back, I don't want anything that you bring from the sea. Lawrence showed Nellie the rabbit. Oh, Lawrence, you brung me the rabbit. Nellie said. Lawrence smiled. Nellie fixed Edward in a few days. A beautiful dress, a fluffy tail, and two straight ears. Nellie named him Susanna. He now was a girl. Nellie would put him on the counter while she baked. Edward would listen. They would eat dinner together. It was all wonderful until their da daughter Lolly came for a visit. Lolly came into the house. She spotted Edward lying on the couch. Lolly made a face and yelled to her mother and said, What is this? Susanna, Nellie replied. Lolly said, I'm going to run some errands. Okay, Nellie replied. 
Lolly did not run errands. Instead, she took Edward by the foot and put him in the trash can. She put the trash can in, the, in her truck and drove to the dump. Edward's heart spoke to him. It said two words, Nellie, Lawrence. After Lolly left him at the dump, he spent quite some time in there, 180 days and counting. Ernest, who worked there, would make a speech every morning. He would say, I am Ernest, who is king of the world. How am I king of the world? Because I'm king of the garbages, and garbages are what the world is made of. Therefore, I'm Ernest, who is king of the world. Edward thought about how he would get his revenge on Lolly. One day, a dog came into the dump. Edward hated dogs. The dog picked Edward up and ran. He had left the garbage dump forever. A dog named Lucy found Edward in the dump. Lucy brought Edward back to his owner, Bull a hobo, which gave him his new clothes. His shirt was made out of old hats and his pants were made out of handkerchiefs. When Edward was with Bull and Lucy, his name was Malone. Since Bull was a hobo, Malone went from place to place all over the world. Bull sang so beautifully and Malone loved it. When day turned to night, Bull, Lucy, and Malone looked up at the stars. His journey with Bull and Lucy ended after seven years when Bull, Lucy, and Malone went on a train. Malone got kicked off the train and went flying through the air. Edward had wished to many times to have the ability to say goodbye to his owners. Malone was flying through the air. He landed. Malone started rolling now. Where is he going? He was thinking. Malone started to tear up in his mind. He was about to cry. He was terribly missing Bull and Lucy after seven years with them. Malone could, Malone could hear Lucy howling in the background. She was crying. Malone stopped. An old lady was walking through the path. She picked him up. The old lady that found Edward used him to be a scarecrow. Edward started to say it's too late. He said that because he has been through so much throughout his journey. Then a little boy came and said, I will come back for you. But Edward was giving up. The next day, Bryce took Jangles off the post and brought Jangles to his house. Bryce wanted to give Jangles to his sister, Sarah Ruth. When Sarah Ruth saw Jangles, she was so happy. Sarah Ruth had a china doll when she was younger, but her father stepped on it when he was drunk. So Sarah didn't have anything with with anything to play with since. All she ever had to play with is a box of buttons. When Sarah Ruth was younger, her mother would always dance with her. So Bryce put strings on Jangles and made him into a puppet. While Jangles was with Sarah Ruth and Bryce and Bryce and Sarah Ruth was getting sicker and sicker. Finally Edward loved Sarah Ruth and did not want her to die. By the fifth month, she stopped eating and stopped breathing. Edward wanted to die. He could not bear to live without Sarah Ruth. The next day, Bryce went to Memphis. Bryce was playing with Edward, trying to make money for food. Eventually, Bryce made enough money for food, so he went to Neil's diner. Bryce ordered food, and when it was time to pay, Bryce did, didn't have enough money. Neil came out angry. Neil came out with a spatula in his hand saying, You came in here hungry, right? You order food. I cooked it and Marlene bought it to you. I reckon, said Bryce. You reckon, said Neil. I cooked the food, Marlene served it, and now you pay. Since Bryce had no money, he tried to make Edward dance. Ever seen a dancing rabbit, Bryce said? Neil did not like that. He took Edward, smashed him over the counter, and there was a very loud crack. Edward blacked out, but he couldn't be dead because he was never alive. He had a dream. He had a dream that he walked into a house. He recognized all the people he loved were there. Nellie, Lawrence, Bull, Lucy, Bryce, and Abilene. He gave Abilene a big hug. Then he went outside and asked where Sarah Ruth was. Lawrence pointed to the sky. Look, the Sarah Ruth constellation. Then all of a sudden, a pair of wings popped up in front of him. His wish came true. He put the wings and flew up to go up to afterlife with Sarah Ruth. Lawrence pulled down Edward. Nobody wanted to lose Edward again, especially Abilene, but it was all a dream. When Edward 
woke up, he was looking at a man. His name was Lucius Clark. He told Edward that a boy came and dropped you off to get fixed. The boy did not have enough money, so Lucius Clark got to keep Edward. As Edward got placed on the shelf next to a new doll, the new doll was being mean to Edward. A couple of months later, that doll got sold. Edward was all alone until one day an old doll got placed next to Edward. The old doll was cracked into a million pieces, just like Edward. When Lucius Clark left, the old doll started to communicate with Edward. How long have you been here for, the old, the old doll said. Edward answered back, months and months, but I don't care. One place is the same as another to me. Someone will come, someone will come, repeated the doll. The next day, the first customer was a girl with her father. Perfect, Natalie said while picking up the old doll. Someone will come, someone will come, Edward repeated. The old doll was right, someone did come. Edward was still sitting in the doll shop. He knew for sure that no one would come for him, but all of a sudden he heard the door open. The woman and her daughter came in, and the woman asked her daughter, whose name was Maggie, what she was holding in her arms. She was carrying Edward, but sadly the woman said that they were only looking. Maggie showed her mother that what she was holding, and her mother looked confused. Maggie's mother put her hand on the locket around her neck. Then Edward saw that it was no locket. It was a watch, a pocket watch. Most surprising, it was not just the, an ordinary watch. It was his pocket watch. The woman realized it was Edward, and then Edward realized it was Abilene. Abilene and Maggie took Edward home and lived happily ever after. Maggie took Edward and swung him around. Sometimes Edward went so fast that he felt like he was flying, and he knew that love wasn't just a waste of time. It was a journey, and his heart had opened up. The end!